everybody. Welcome back. No brush required. We are here and it's Tuesday and my name's Tamara Grand and I'm looking for Barbara Reed. Hey Jules, how are you? Hope you're having a good day. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm laughing because, well, two things. <laughs> I think I had my volume cranked. <laughs> so when you came on, it was like, ah! <laughs> and number two, I have my blind fully drawn, closed, because there are two guys on a scaffold right outside the window. Oh, it's like, hi! Great. <laughs> and you know, I'm on the 13th floor, right? Right. So. right. Hi, Patricia. I saw Patricia's hanging in. Um, and I'm loud and I'm really lit today. <laughs> I'm really lit. I have my you new lights lit. on. I have my new lights on. I've been playing around with the color and the intensity. <laughs> I feel like I'm not lit enough. I've got, I, well, because I had to close that because it's a little strange. I know. <laughs> but hopefully I'm not too shadowy. No. You're, you're to your radiance. I know. <laughs> I, I'm trying to decide do I like a warmer light? Do I like a cooler light? I'm going to shoot a bunch of. Um, paintings today and I just finally decided to get these box lights these you know these these big lights that have the diffusers on the front um so that's what I'm staring into <laughs> oh I saw I saw them in your post they look amazing well let's I've got different lights here I can experiment Ooh, that's bright well, one of the things I made. noticed is, well, I, so I use my iPhone for all my photography and it's generally been quite, it's been good because it's a, it's a recent phone mm -hmm. um, and it's good for smaller pieces. And mm -hmm. now that I'm up to the point where everything is minimum 24 by 24, mm -hmm. because of the lighting in my studio, there's no place I can put the pieces that don't get glare, bounce or shadow. The smaller pieces, I could move them around and find that yeah. sweet spot on the wall. The bigger pieces, I can't. It's just not working. So, um, and they're too big to stand over. And, you know, natural light is great when you get it, but it seems like, you know, we get six months of cloud here in the winter. And then exactly when you need to photograph, it's blazing sunlight. For the week. <laughs> I know. And I, I have this, oh my God, I have this issue all the time with photographing large pieces and I have to stand over them. And I, now there's shadows too, right? So I, I like, yeah. I'm like, standing with my hips way back so that I don't have yeah. like a shadow or I'm contorted. Um, so it's crazy. Is that what Marnie uh, say? Uh, Marnie, yes, Barb, come to BC soon. I would like that very much. <laughs> uh, then I would have to make two stops. I'd have to go see you. That's okay. And then I'd have to go see my sister too. I would love that. We're, yeah. That's just just putting, I mean, my goal, is I got to get my spare bedroom done this summer. My son, we're, we are in, we're in a bit of a heat wave out here. Mm. And he said yesterday, he goes, Mom, you better get that room done sooner before the heat comes back so that we can sleep down there. Because it's, it's in our lower, like we're in a three floor home. And it's half underground. So it's quite cool down here, which is why I'm in a sweater, even though it's 26 degrees out. Mm. Um, and I don't air have air conditioning? Air. No. Ugh. It's an old house. We're in a, we're in a house from '76, and air conditioning is not has not been a thing out here. You know, with yeah. climate change, the last five years we've had hot summers, but yeah. um, not historically been a thing. But oh, you Patricia, gotta have it here. You got to have it in Ontario. Patricia, don't worry. We'll, we'll fill you in. Yes, we're we're plotting. We're plotting. Like I'm ready to go at the drop of a hat. I'm I'm waiting for this one. She's got to. We were already get her act together. Well, we were all ready to go and pull the plug on an end of June trip. And then the price for flights that close for me was 1300 Canadian yeah, for nonstop flights. That, and I'm not flying overnight no. anymore. I'm too old for that. And I'm not doing a four hour layover in um, Calgary before I fly or in, you know, the middle of the U.S. somewhere. So anyways, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. um, it's so nice to be chatting with you this week. I feel so relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I almost was late. I was kind of just floating around. <laughs> now I'm checking out the guys out there. Hovering Not like last week. We were like, <gasps> oh. Put, send like, us a heart if you were if you were in that live call last week with Brian Root. Did you go? 
guys watch. We got a lot of views on oh, that. Boy. A lot of you guys were live and everybody was just so kind with their comments afterwards. We did share some of those with, with Brian. Yes. And, um, I think both of he us would, were kind of floating for the rest of the day. I was like hyper. I, I was so hyper. It was such a, it exceeded my expectations. I knew we'd have a great conversation. I just didn't realize how powerful a conversation it would be. And he yeah. has said he would love to come back. So we're taking so, at his word. Fingers crossed. Well, that's actually a really good segue into um, today's topic. And because we, we had, we got some wonderful tips and, and mm -hmm. insights from Brian last week. And then we were also listening to the Art Chatter podcast. They had their 50th episode. Um, Gainer uh, Leverett Jakes and Karen George, um, they do a podcast called Art Chatter. It was their 50th episode and they asked a bunch of artists, including both of us, to uh, give a little nugget of advice that we would give to our you know, earlier selves or another new artist. And it was so lovely to hear all of those comments it that was. we kind of started thinking, oh, maybe we should do something um, along the lines of, of tips and, mm -hmm. and things that we all like to share. And I think we were kind of hoping to get some new ones because there's lots of them that are out there that we all know about. Um, and I, I want to use the T word. I won't use the T word, but you know what I mean. Okay, I know it's T. <laughs> um, but, um, and you guys sent us a bunch. So we did get DMs. We did get answers to stickers. Hey, Bonnie. And we're going to go through and read some of those today and give you the option to op opportunity to come on and talk if you want to expound on it or um, you have another one. Mm -hmm. Anyways, the first thing I wanted to share, because it was related to something Brian said that I put into application directly this week was a varnishing tip mm -hmm. that I did not know. So I'm freaked out by varnishing, especially big pieces, because I can't reach across the whole painting at one time. Some of these pieces are so big that I worry about brush marks and, you know, all that sort of stuff. He suggested, and this was brilliant, um, I always do two coats, but I never paid any attention to which direction I went in first. And he said, if you end with the vertical application, so do your first coat horizontal, let it dry, do your second coat vertical, you won't get nearly as much light bouncing and reflecting off the painting. And I'm like, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. To my eye, so I did that. To my eye, that looks like it had, had the desired effect. I'll be able to tell for sure when I photograph this afternoon, <laughs> um, especially the one that I did put gloss varnish on because mm -hmm. it just wanted that's to tricky. be shiny. Um, but I thought that was a great mm -hmm. tip. So that's the one I'm going to share first. I'm going to verify that that tip works. No, you were using, you used high gloss on one and then- not Just gloss, not high, because I, I have high gloss. Yeah, um, I, I used satin gloss. on five pieces and then I used the gloss, I used gloss varnish on the sixth one. I, I quite love satin these days. I do too, I do too. Although I felt like it took a little bit of the depth off of two mm -hmm. of the paintings. And so when I got to the big glass one, which I just love how, how deep it, it is already um, with the gloss medium on top, especially. Mm -hmm. I thought, no, I'm going to do a gloss. Mm -hmm. Just going to go for it and do a gloss. So super shiny. Now I have a question. Yes. Maybe somebody out there knows the answer. And I've, I've looked online. I can't really find anything definitive. Can you paint on top of varnished pieces? I, I've always been told no, but... I don't know what the rationale behind it is. If it's acrylic, is it a problem of it not sticking? And because I've been, I've seen also even with gloss medium, some people will say not to paint over gloss medium because oh, acrylic can chip off. No. But I would always finish that acrylic again and yeah. seal it in. So yeah. I don't know when I've, I've actually removed varnish from um, wooden panels with varnish remover and then sanded everything back outside mask glasses the whole works so i've been able to work rework varnished pieces that way so that's um water-based varnish i guess yes it's liquitex is that a water-based that's water-based acrylic i wonder if you could do it just by sanding to just rough up texture Possible. does anybody out there know <laughs> or apply a clear gesso the clear gesso with tooth might give you enough on top of varnish bonnie says if water is varnished is water-based you can well good to know okay i'm taking bonnie, you 
Because to me, it's almost like a medium, like varnish. Yeah. You cannot, it's almost like a glazing liquid. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Um, there's a difference between permanent and removable varnish, mm -hmm. and maybe that is why. Yes, this is true. Absolutely true. So um, I'm just going to answer a quick question. Patricia asked what brush I use. Tr Patricia, this was my big splurge last week. It's a Gamvar bar varnish brush. It says it's only supposed to, it only works with Gamvar varnish varnishes. I don't believe that. It's the most beautiful brush. I love it. It didn't leave any um, brush marks. I treated it really nicely in between days and it's not going to get touched for anything but varnish. You say that now. <laughs> you say that now. I, no. I used to say that too. And then it's like, oops, I used nope. my varnish. So it what says varnish on it. Okay. That I believe. Um, Non-water based are not like medium and should not be painted over. Well, there we go. See that one tip expanded into like four tips today. Mm -hmm. I'm almost tempted to, I don't know, try to see what would happen. Yeah. Like what's, what's the worst thing? You trash it? What did Brian say? Like just trash a whole pile of paintings? Yeah. Like well, take, take something that you don't, you don't particularly love and go for it, right? I mean, I certainly wouldn't do it if you're on a deadline for a no. piece that you need to submit. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, no I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it with, uh, I have one big piece, I think it's 30 by 30 on wood, that's waxed, and I want to rework it. And I know it can be done, but it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of surface to have to take mineral spirits to, because I think that's what they say to use. Yes, yeah, and I've bought that before. Yeah, is it stinky? Uh, no. No. And then you just let it, have you done it? Have you dissolved wax? No, not wax, but I've used that, I've used that varnish before, that varnish remover. Bonnie says, don't if you're gonna sell it. I'm not gonna sell it, but there's a part of it. Um, I mean, I actually, I love the painting, but it's not gonna sell. And then okay. how would you describe a painting? I wanted to ask Brian this, how, how do you, like he said, you know, make, make um, a whole whack of paintings and then destroy them. Well, we tend to paint over, right? But if you can't paint over, how do you destroy a 30 by 30 inch? <laughs> well, if it's canvas, you just take the canvas off the stretcher bars. And, it's not. It's but it's not, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't burn it either. If you want to set fire to it, because it'd be pretty toxic, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, Run good it question. over. Good question. So that's a question that you guys can, can float. So do you want to hear a few tips? I do want to hear, hear a few tips. So I, uh, I had a, a few messages from pe people. Um, so Sue Balmer, I don't think she's on this call right now, but she sent me this tip. Uh, choosing color palettes using color picker apps helps her to feel less overwhelmed. Now, I do have a few color picker apps, and I, I don't know what to do with them. So I kind of wish she was on because I'd love to know how she... Does she just like choose a random palette picker and do you, you know what I've done? What I've done with them before is I've taken a photograph that I like, and some oh, of those yes. apps you can actually then it will pick the um, it'll pick the, the palette out for you. And so sometimes you know it's I, you and I don't paint representationally, but sometimes there'll be a photo of something that I've taken and I like the colors in it. And if you run it through that, then it'll give you an idea of the predominant, because you can tell it, do you want three colors? Do you want five? Do you want 15, mm -hmm. right? So you can kind of get a sense of what that palette is. And then if you want to go from there and use those colors in a different painting, that's sometimes Have a good you way to do it. Have you done it? Have you actually taken those colors? Yeah, I, and then, yeah? Yeah, I did that with a series I painted a couple of years ago wow. that were based on um, some lakes that we saw, Cathedral Lakes National Park that we went to. and the blues and the greens and the gray browns were really, really interesting. And I just didn't have a sense of where to start. And so I just played around that way. And I did a whole series of paintings based on a color palette that I created like that. So good, good tip then. Yeah. Good tip. I, I got to go into those apps again and see, see what else is, what else I can do with them. That's awesome. You got, got one? I got one. Um, all right, I, we got a comment from um, Marg Duggan Jones, who couldn't be here, but she did leave a really good one, which I liked. Yeah. She said, not that I don't like these all, but I thought I could use this practically in my own work yeah. right away. She said, um, I really like to use uh, gesso, white gesso mm -hmm. instead of white paint. I love that it gives a visual and actual texture and toothiness to your work. 
And I do this because I often have a lot of color in my paintings that I want to peek through. If you use this full strength gesso or thin it down just a little bit to allow the history to show in a really interesting way. The more you work it in, the more interesting the marks get. I thought that was really cool. Mm. I took a, a class um, in Dundas where Marg is from uh, and the instructor was using white gesso instead of white paint. I think it's, it's a bit warmer than white, than yeah. uh, white paint, like titanium white is really, well, and it's, it's really, it's more opaque too. So, yeah. I mean, even titanium white, especially like I use the liquid, I use the liquid golden um, liquid version. It's not that you can see through it. And sometimes I like yeah. that, but sometimes yeah. find a bit of the other. Um, and I like the idea of the texture because I've done that as kind of a base before when I put my gesso base on and I'll put it on not with a brush, but with um, a catalyst wedge or something and purposefully leave some ridges in it. Mm -hmm. And I know you can use other products for that, but there's just, I like not to have too many products. I like it when mm -hmm. you have a product like this that you can use in a bunch of different ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would be something to try for sure. Yeah. But, Thanks, but gesso, and I, gesso and I have, <laughs> we have a relationship. Whenever I use gesso, it's everywhere. Does it, <laughs> is it splashier than other paints? I, th I think so. It it's funny because Joanne Godner said the same thing. She was prepping pa panels yesterday and I commented on it and she, how much I love the prep stage. And she commented, yes, yeah, she does too. And she gets gesso everywhere, everywhere in her hair, everywhere. on her glasses, everywhere. on her clothes. <laughs> and I can be neat. I think I'm being quite neat and tidy, but it's, it's like it, 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 uh, just comes out of the bottle like a thousand miles an hour and it's all over me and it just sprays and splatters and you, so you don't do you, have you ever used black gesso yes because i've been i use <laughs> that to do a canvas behind myself okay it get when it gets on your fingers it's really hard to wash it off compared oh. to other paints like i would, was in there scrubbing with the magic eraser to get the gesso oh, yeah, off yeah, my yeah. <laughs> yeah no i believe it well who was it I, somebody was it, um, oh gosh, Sue Johnson? Maybe. Who was showing uh, using inks? Yes. And making little circles. And I was so impressed because of that. First of all, her ink bottle is immaculate. Oh. There's not a drip. <laughs> There's not a drip. There's nothing. And um, I don't know anybody else here who uses acrylic inks. Do I have a good example? I, I won't even do it. I take the, the lid off. And next thing you know, I've got it on my hands. It just happens. Yeah. So. You are a very self-admitted <laughs> messy painter though, right? A what? You are self-admittedly <laughs> a messy painter. Well, yeah. Um, Rena worked next to me in New York, so she probably got <laughs> that. She probably got some of your paint she, on her. <laughs> I think she did. <laughs> I think she did. And I don't know. I mean, I, I consider myself very tidy. Along those lines, here's a tip. Okay. So, um, you know how sometimes you get like this, this had uh, creme fraiche. You can buy creme fraiche in little bottles, little jars, and they're, they're lovely little jars, right? But then you use up the creme fraiche and then what do you do with it? And there's no lid. These, these oh. little creme fraiche uh, jars don't come with lids. So here's my little system. If I'm mixing up a, a glaze or I come up with a color, usually it's a glaze, something that's gonna survive. Just put it in a little Ziploc. And so I've got a bunch of these little jars in uh, little Ziplocs. That's little awesome. Bottles. Yeah. Oh, beeswax, I bet. <laughs> Can you peel it off though? I would love, I love being able to peel wax off. That would Didn't be Didn't you used to do that doing batik? We did batik in school and, and then the art, art teacher would have like a, um, one of those electric skillets oh. and have, okay. oh yeah. So, so this would be super hot runny yeah. beeswax and we would we like she'd be like don't don't put your hand in of course what do we do it's like mm, just, just and yes you get it, it burns and it really hurts but like it's it was cool yeah <laughs> was um, i i t a friend of mine does ukrainian eggs oh. easter eggs oh, yeah. and so i did a workshop with her last year and the way you actually make the designs before you dip the eggs is you have this i forget what it's called it's this little tiny yeah. stylus with a yes. dipper oh, and you have to, right? yes, and you have to get it in the wax and you use the hot wax. I got hot wax everywhere. I had a parent um, come and do it with my grade four class. 
So I don't know how she didn't lose her mind, but I remember it. And um, yeah, so you have to like plan it. So you wax it and then dip it. Yeah, it was remember really fun. The wax, remember how you got the wax off? I know. We stuck it in the oven. I'm just going to show you because I always have something to show. I got one too. These are my, my, these are my eggs. These are the eggs that I made. Beautiful. They were so fun. Hot. I love it. We put them in cookies tins um she had the oven on really low and paper towel and when they t once they were painted we would put them in the cookie tin and then the wax would all melt and then you would just take a paper towel and buff them i, cool, bet, huh? you she, I bet you she took them all home and did them at home no nope. we didn't do that today oh well we did no it, for the, my parent i think she took home all the eggs and then would appear the next day with the um the cleaned eggs yeah cool anybody have any other clean keeping things clean tip Tips? <laughs> How to deal with your messy, your inherent messiness tips? I got um, overalls. I got overalls to help me with that because okay. I was, I don't like wearing an apron. I have an apron. I just don't like wearing it. So I ended up getting a pair of overalls to actually help a good friend of mine out on her farm. But I thought, well, heck, I'm going to wear them if, when I remember to put them on. When I'm painting, and actually it's great because I wipe my brushes across the bib front i wipe my hands and it actually is saving me a lot of um these paper towel yeah i know and and the overalls look actually they're they're hanging behind me my, there they are mine are hanging behind the wall behind yeah. the camera <laughs> i don't think these are allowed in our closet in the bedroom yeah no i i, I strip down in the studio and get dressed <laughs> <Do you? laughs> yeah. all right ready for another ready. tip ready for a tip Let's see. Uh, another Tamara. Tamara Meehan? Meehan? Yes. Um, she said, uh, voice record ideas while you're exploring or painting to write down later in her journal. So I guess if she comes up with something, but she doesn't want to stop the flow of uh, her painting, right. she'll yeah. record it and then transcribe it later into her journal. Oh, what is Douglas saying? Oh, my glasses on. We're hearing about what everybody's wearing in their studio douglas's t-shirt and jeans are they covered in paint douglas do they stand up by themselves when you take them off yeah. are they <laughs> that's crispy. my goal they gotta get crispy on the outside oh. <laughs> bonnie said she thought you were a beatnik and then she meant neatnik <laughs> oh, he's both i'd rather be a beatnik than a neatnik i am a neatnik i'm okay i'm tidy but i for whatever reason i'm a messy bitch, so that's okay. Our, our, oh my gosh, our window tr trim right behind uh, where my tables are, covered in splatters. Yep. So covered, says Douglas. Awesome. No, but no, not. Be it's not bad. I don't know. I think it's Roman's going to have to get in there with a scraper. Wouldn't it be fun, fun to do an art? I get, I'm going off on a random tangent. I should use Tamara's idea of just voice recording it and putting away for later. Wouldn't it be so cool to do an exhibition of artists studio clothes yes like just yes, the clothes, it would. just the pants the things that stand up by themselves i think that would be so fun <laughs> jot that down jot that down um have you got another one for us i do i'm gonna sh can i share one of mine because oh, this yeah. is something i discovered this week that um this is for people who don't plan far enough in advance how many of you guys would fall into that category parts if you would fall into the category of not planning far enough in advance for things. Um, I have a show opening a week from Thursday and I wanted to get show cards made and I waited a little too long to order them on Moo and they told me they'd be delivered by the 30th but of course I need them for the 23rd and they still might come on time but what I ended up doing is and I don't need a ton of them, is we have a local uh, drugs, a lo local photo place called London Drugs, but you know, you could, it could be anywhere. And I created them in Canva and I sent them to the printer there to be printed on photo paper. And they're not very expensive and you could print small numbers of them. And awesome. I also got them to do my exhibition. I, I uploaded my exhibition because you know you have to put a little things beside your paintings. I got to ask so that, you both when you're so, done with this. Yeah, yeah. So what I did was I just created something in Canva and Canva has a QR code generator within. So right in the app, you can just use it 
QR code. So that goes to my website. And then I created a little blurb for each painting and they're on this nice um, pearlized photo paper. They cost about 40 cents each. <laughs> And I'm just going to stick them up on the wall with some sticky tack or some double sided tape next to each painting. But so, you know, sometimes you want to order 100 cards of something. Sometimes you only want one. And so this is a really good option. And they were ready two hours later. I could pick them up. So, you know, it could be Walmart. It could be or whatever. Staples. Your, do you yeah, have staples out there? We do. Whatever your local photo is, you can do it all online. Canva, you can make your images. Say, download them as JPEGs and then upload them immediately to my the, the uh, photo lab website. And, you know, Moo, I would have had to order 25 of each of those little mm -hmm. ones. Or, you know, I could have printed them on my own printer and mounted them on cardstock. I've done that all before. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look as professional mm -hmm. as these guys do. Mm -hmm. So that's that was my tip. If you're short on time and you don't want to spend a ton of money and you don't need a bajillion of something, mm -hmm. Think about designing them yourself and sending them to a local um, photo lab. Mm -hmm. so, so these QR codes, this is sort of a new thing, isn't it? Yes. So, so you have a QR code for each painting. No, you can do it however you want. What I decided to do, oh. there's a bunch. So for this oh, okay. exhibition, there's six paintings. And I thought about having it. So the QR code goes just to my website. Ah is the idea. I could have had it go to a special page that's for the exhibition. I could have had it go to each painting specifically. It depends entirely on how you want to organize it. I decided to keep it simple and I just wanted people to be able to scan this and it'll take them to my website and that's on my list to do this week to have a banner on the top of my website pointing them to the Braves, to the so, Brave shows. So, so um, Canva, like just this is the, the free version or the professional version? The free version. So it will generate a QR code yeah. and, and then you provide the web address. Yeah, that's it. So it's, it's down in the left hand men set of menus. There's something that's called apps. Mm -hmm. And if you click on it, one of the apps from within is called QR code generator. And it'll ask you to type in your, your URL that you want to generate a QR code for. And then it'll just put it in a box on your design and you can resize it. You can move it around. Very cool. Yeah. That, that's neat. That's neat. Um, okay. I have a tip from Rena. Rena, you're on here. And I, I'm, <laughs> I was thinking this was mostly music, but then I thought some of it sounded like alcohol or, or tea. <laughs> so I think Rena, uh, you can clarify. So Rena said, um, I'm assuming this is music you listen to Rena. Oh my God. The guys are right outside our window. Ooh. Uh, you said uh, Bee Gees, Yo-Yo Ma, okay, Double Tito's on the Rock, Rocks with Lime. That can't be a band. No, <laughs> that's for favorite drink. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen, I know that he's a rock musician. And then Peppermint Tea. So these are, th this is musical choices that Rena likes to listen to and, and cocktails as she's painting. Excellent. She oh, she hasn't said me. anything, so. Well, she sent me a bunch of tips, too. So why don't we continue with the Rena tips? Okay. Um, she said she keeps a jar filled with part water and part Murphy oil soap. So she puts her wiped off brushes in them and it keeps the brushes soft and clean for many days. For your acrylic brushes? I've heard that before, but I haven't tried it. No. Oh, okay, what's she saying? It's that that's part of her practice depending on time of day, so. The cocktail um, or the, the brush cleaner? No, the brush cleaner. Tito's is vodka. Oh, so we're having like more conversations. <laughs> so Murphy's Murphy's um, oil soap. I'd heard that before. And Joanne Godnier also said something to me that I should have known, but I didn't. And it makes it was a big aha mm -hmm. moment. Don't clean your brushes in hot water. Clean them in tepid water because no, hot why? Water, because and this has happened to me before because the brush part is glued into the end of the the. Oh God, my terms are gonna be off here. This part is glued into this part. And so I've actually had these, mm. the bottom part fall off before, right there is where it's joined on this brush. That's all glued in. So if you use hot water, it breaks the glue down really? and the bottom of your brush will fall off. And I'm like, oh, I've got a few examples of that in my studio. <laughs> okay, I, I use lukewarm, well, warm. 
I don't know why, it just feels like it's cleaner. <laughs> I let my water get hot because it feels cleaner and it makes a better lather with the soap, right? So <laughs> like a nice little lather. Yeah. Bubbles are nice everything. So Bubbles that was awesome. awesome. Um, I have one more Rena tip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rena says, full disclosure, she's rarely imbibing Tito's in her studio. Okay, we aren't judging. No. We know that. No judging you here. You think this is just bubbly? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I always have a, something that you can't see through? <laughs> the heck of a big margarita. <laughs> it is. Um, Rena also suggested keeping plenty of open sketchbooks and extra paper around to brush excess paint on. She said these end up being wonderful places to play and experiment. So they are just practice pieces, pieces, not pieces to finish. Sometimes she uses them for collage elements, mm. inspiration for larger work or wrapping paper. And I did receive something from her that was wrapped in a random piece of beautiful art that she wiped your brushes on, I think. Yeah, I love that. That's a great That's a tip. Good one. Thanks, Rena. Those were lots of great tips. And mm. um, I'll, yes, we'll join you in Tito's in a few hours. Sounds good. Okay, what else do I got? Um, Sam Waters, mm -hmm. um, her tip was uh, not a studio tip, more of a community tip. So make connections and build a network of support, yeah. which we're huge believers in. Well, as we're doing now and listen i mean we've had some great tips come in from our uh, network of support for sure yeah and i think that uh, you know there's other that the, it always pays off and always end. i mean not that you not that you're doing these things your outreach to pay off but i mean for me personally this year volunteering on a committee to create a local event has led to an exhibition mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the connections are made those things happen and so being part of the community. If you're not part of the community, nobody knows you and nobody knows what, what you might be able to do. And you know, you don't know other people and you don't know mm -hmm. how they might be able to impact, you might be able to impact their practice and vice mm -hmm. versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're, we're both huge, and, huge believers in that. And you know, Sam Waters, it was Sam Waters, right? Mm -hmm. She and Sue Bulmer are currently working on a collaborative project, a, a concertina sketchbook book mm -hmm. that they're sending back and forth. And I, I think that we're maybe have them in the works to come on and talk about that sometime next month when they're a little further oh, along. Would be great. We got uh, this comment just went by dish soap. Yep, I use dish soap too. I do too. To clean the brushes. I know some um, some artists say they only use water, but it just doesn't feel clean. You know, I, like I must clean. say, clean. I like to go. I like to go in with this at the very end. Like I'll use dish soap or hand soap or whatever. And oftentimes at the very end, I'll just, after it's almost, after I think it's clean, I'll just add a little tiny, I'll stick my bristles in this and just add a little more. This is dedicated brush clean, cleaner and preserver mm. for, acryl, for oil paint, watercolor and acrylic. And I do notice that my brushes stay softer when I use it. That's a good but, You know what I used to, um, it's like my last my last thing that I'll do with brushes or any of the tools and it seems to help you know these these scrubbies that you can get yeah um, and I use it on my, my hands because <laughs> it's I mean it's scrubby but it's not gonna to get, sorry get the paint off yeah to get the paint off but also um some of my brushes like these guys the polytip catalyst brushes sometimes just to wipe them with the suds like in this direction, we'll get off some of the stuff that gets into the roots a little bit. Yeah, it's just, it's just me. That, it, it, that's my kind of clean with the scrubby. But I've seen that brush cleaner before. I've seen that in art supply stores. Another vote for Murphy's Oil Soap. Where do you product get that? Like product placement. Um, you yeah. can get it at uh, the, any grocery store. It's going to be in your cleaning section because you use it for hardwood floors, right? Is it oily? No. Nope. <laughs> I just see, I, I see the word oil in it. Nope. Nope. So I wonder why they call it oil soap. Bev says, this is my friend Bev. She uses a bar of dish soap from our local refill shop, reducing waste. Good for, awesome. You would love what my husband's doing right now. This is a little aside. He's What's kind he of particular about the soap he uses. Yes. He doesn't like scents. And oh. I've re used to make a pump body wash soap for the shower with no scent and they don't anymore. So. He 
takes ivory soap and grates it all up and boils it all down and makes its own. <laughs> and I said, what about the bar soap? Well, I don't like bar soap. It gets all yucky. I said, put it on a soap dispenser, like in the shower. I like bar soap. I don't like, I don't I know. like but so because you need like one of those puffies and it's not, I don't believe it's sudsy enough for me. Yeah. I like it I, I, as an aside, um, I do remember. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> oh my God, I just had the we same went, flashback. When we, were, when we were in New York, we were looking for bar soap because our hotel did not have bar soap. It had like a little thing of body wash <laughs> oh to last God. two of us for a week. <laughs> So we went looking. And could we, we looked all over the place. Find soap in New York no. City? Could we find bar soap no. in New York City? No, we could and not. When we did find it, everything on the shelf was locked up behind plastic thing, plastic locked. sheets. So we had to like press a button on the wall to get someone to come and open it up to give us a bar. A of bar soap. of soap. A bar of soap. What the heck? <laughs> I just, I hadn't thought of that until just now. Next time we go, we're packing a bar of soap. I'm packing a bar of soap. <laughs> what that lathers up beautifully. Not one of those stupid little hotel soaps that's not really soap. It's like what's left at the end of a bar of yeah, soap. That's yeah. what oh, that's, that's so funny. That's cool, Bev. The bar of soap is actually dish soap and very sudsy. Cool to know. Cool to bar know. Bar soap? And the bar, she was talking, of, yeah. No, she was talking about the stuff from like a, a local refillery place we have called the re i think it's called the refillery they do a lot of get things your husband that... to put ivory soap in the microwave oh god no no because we have to clean that no it now there might be more to it than just putting the bars open but it used to be one of the <laughs> it used to be just one of the science experiments my kids would do and just google it and then and then get bernie to do it because it it does something really cool and I don't think it'll wreck your microwave. <laughs> don't, don't, don't hold it against me if it does. <laughs> the Masters, that's what I'm doing. That's what I use. Heather. Is that what that is? But it's called the Masters Brush Cleaner. I love it. You can get bigger pots of it, but I've had this for a couple of years. Like it lasts a long well, time. Well, no kidding. Okay, um, I, got, I got some oh, more tips. These are okay. a, couple, a couple for me. Um, wow. some, of, some of these I think are no-brainers, but maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. Um, I store. <laughs> we could call ourselves no brains required. Sorry. <laughs> no brain required. I I sort. Hang on. I I do this. I I I sort my um, uh, heavy body paints in tubs. So by color family. So these are the the blues. Yes. And, and then I even had to break into other groups. I like sorting stuff. I think that's my grade two teacher past, right? I like sorting things. My neons, all my like uh, fluorescent neon paints are in another little thing. So just sorting stuff um, yeah. to make it easier. And then the, and then the paints that the, the stuff that you use all the time, like I'm always using titanium white and I'm always using this, this, foul smelling now i think i have to get the ammonia in there <laughs> it's really bad but um all the stuff that i use all the time i just keep it within arm's reach like right. even that's, closer to most stuff. that's easy to do in your studio space yeah you know, pretty much everything's arm's reach <laughs> your arms like but three. i do like the idea of um color yeah. sorting guys I, I think i saw nick wilton put something on he had some tip about that too and i remember looking at it going oh next time i go to ikea because i have oh yeah one big one big bin for all my tube paints and then another big bin for all my liquid paints. And yeah, I'm constantly digging and throwing things over my shoulder. So well, that, that could be more skinny. Boring. That skinny thing I showed you, that's a planter and it fits on the bottom. I can fit, I think I've got eight or nine of them lined up like this um, on the bottom uh, shelf of my oh, uh, right. painting table. table. And the other tip related to the table is if you like just to, um, work flat, um, get a table that's, that hits you at your waist so that you're not hunched over all the time. So right. if, if you can manage that to get something that's like waist height, just makes it easier to paint flat. Yeah, for sure. Um, Patricia had a, a tip that I liked. 
Um, I like them all. I shouldn't say that. I like them all. I just remembered you can't, them. You can't rank. You can't rank those yeah. tips. And it's like your Some children. You love them people all. People will feel bad. Um, she said instead of a, uh, for a palette, she uses a ceramic or a glass plate. I think she said it was like a pizza or a pie plate because then, of course, once it all dries, you can just pull it off. You don't even have to worry about washing it out. I love that idea. Oh, I know a lot of people use those wet palettes. I had... I had one and it just was too complicated <laughs> and it took me longer to get it set up. Uh, this is, I think, a similar yeah. idea to the, the tip we got. It's just, and it is a proper palette. And this is my go-to. It's just plastic or something. And yeah, you can peel stuff off when you're done. Ceramic pizza plate. How appropriate for a New Yorker. And it peels off the ceramic. Sometimes I find stuff off paint sticks. I was it's using, harder. um, I was, aluminum pie plates for a while because there's a local company that that uh, makes great pies and they come in these reusable aluminum pie plates but I found and I love them because I like having a lip on my palette I otherwise I worry about it going all over the place and oh she said it comes off with water uh, but I found the paint didn't peel off them very well no unless it was really really thick I couldn't really get in and it was hard to separate the mm -hmm. paint from the pizza pie plate and same with um, Lucite. I was, I have like four of these Liquitex Lucite palettes. You can't get the paint off mm. for love or money. You cannot, I would need like a jackhammer to get the paint off. So I don't, I, they look cool because the paint is stuck, but I can't use them again. Whereas I can peel it off. I think Janie said she used tempered the by fast tempered glass. Oh, microwave the glass plate. That might work. Patricia says she sprays it with water and it all comes right off. With have water? I guess you, you tried that, right? I, sh I could try it with the loose site, but um, I just have this little scraper and I just start it and then I can just literally just pick it up and it comes off. Sometimes it comes off in one piece, one oh. big oh. And you can use it in a painting. Well, well, I used to think, and I had like drawers full of these big, heavy, like look like gum on the underside of a subway seat, right? And I found sometimes that the reverse side was more interesting to me than the bumpy side. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, so, a... so and that's tough to use because if you're going to use, use it in a painting and you've got a really bumpy side, it's harder to glue down. So yeah, yeah. sometimes the reverse sides are stunning of, of the, the paint skin. They are. Bon Bonnie says she has a plastic palette and acrylic doesn't peel off. Do you make it really thick? Yeah, really thick or really thin. And then I use, I start it, Bonnie, with um, this. I'll just start and just, it just peels off. So I'm, I'm pretty sure this is just plastic, but it really does. It really will. Like that's pretty thin. I would, I'd have to scrape away like crazy, but often my palette is quite loaded with paint. Yeah. And then, and then it's easy to, to start this way. So. I've, I've gone back to um, a stay wet palette, but I don't, I, I don't, I don't, yeah. I mean, I just use it within a second. I don't care so much about it staying wet from one day to the next because I don't mix my paints in big quantities. No. But what I do like about it is that I'm, and I just use baking, like parchment baking paper. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a cafeteria tray yep. with a very, with a couple of layers of a shop towel wet. And then I just put a piece of parchment down on it. And I find that works really well for the way I paint um, mm -hmm. and the quantities of paint. I'm, Cause I mix a lot as I go. So I'll start with the yeah. color, add a little bit in. And, and then at the end, what I tend to do, well, I use both sides of it. So the first day I let it I often will take that parchment paper and under my desk, I have a big mixed media pad. That's like, I don't know, 20 by 30 inches. The paper mm. is. Mm. And so I just take my palette paper and go swish, 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 and do that a few times Yeah. Um, and leave it alone. And then the next, then I'll let it dry and I'll turn it over and you, I'm so, so efficient. I use that the backside the second day. Um, and so then I end up, you know, not, not wasting it so much and yeah. uh, and the excess paint always ends up going on to my paper that's going to be used in collage mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. later on random applications of paint yeah it's, it's a really personal thing isn't it i like i like my system uh because 
of course it dries, the paint dries. So say the next day I go back and I want to mix more of a color that I had, I've actually got that color on the you palette can so I can yes. match it at, or get as close as I possibly can, right, yeah. to uh, to doing it. Yeah. And it's fun to um, Does anybody want to pop on and share? I mean, you guys yeah, are like or, drop, or drop a comment, drop, you can drop a comment in the comments box if there's uh, another tip that you've got that is like oh. something. I have one. We might not have heard of that you want to share with everybody. I have a good one. What's your good one? Okay, so um, I have a bunch of fluid acrylics, um, some of the little Liquitex bottles. When they get to the really close to the bottom and you really can't get the paint out, just fill it with water, shake it, and then it makes a fantastic glaze. And I've been using that a lot like a lot in fact i look forward to know when the, the paint gets to the the bottom it's like the old mayonnaise jar you know yeah. you can like use it out of mix up salad dressing you can get some really really beautiful glazes with just the bottom part of your um of the fluid acrylics huh. you know what else you could do that would do with those is you could set you uh next time you start something on canvas you could use that as like a washy layer yep. for your ground do you know what else it's good for and I, I've done it with a lot of pieces recently this was the other tip this is really Joanne I can never say her last name Go Godinier, yeah, Godinier. Uh, who uses um, uh, it's a, a taping a tapers a drywall taping uh -oh. knife and if you use that oh see I'm already covered I'm not even painting <laughs> <laughs> damn it <laughs> You looked at paint and it jumped out. I, I looked at it. <laughs> Anyways, if you use that kind of a runny glaze and you kind of, you know, randomly plop it all over your uh, surface and then you take this and just drag it, you get some really beautiful shapes that you cannot get with a brush. Yeah. I'm obsessed with these. I have two of them. This is my big wide one. And then I've got one that's not quite as wide. All the time I use this. Where'd you buy it? Hardware store? At Home Depot. Oh, okay. And it... Yeah, and it, and it cleans really well, so everything can come off, and you just wipe it too as you go so that you don't end up with kind of like a, it's nice to have that like knife edge yeah. kind yeah. of surface, but you can actually get in there and really scrape it, you can go on with thicker paint, so that that's Joanne, and, and I'm obsessed with this. I almost hardly ever use a brush anymore, that's except for my stripes, which I won't talk about today. Um, I have two tips. They're related, but they, this is, we'll, we'll stack them. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember who told me. Oh, so Julia, Art K. Duffy said, um, she, so this is about storing things that are um, using, using other things to store things. How's that for being I'm, really, really. Throw a word in there. Metal. It's metal. Okay. <laughs> um, she said she has all these Meser Meiser tours, you know, tools like, you know, the bowl That's scrapers and well, the bowl scrapers and things that look like this oh, and yeah, they lay right. all over, they lay all over the place and they get messy. And she was tired of them. I have a bunch of the bowl scraper ones that are bigger and plastic like, too. And so she thought, guys, oh, yeah, I that, will, that will work too. Or, um, or these guys. Yeah. These guys, those guys. So she would have a bunch of those. And she said she got tired of them just kind of all laying around on her table. So what she bought was a toast rack. Oh, at a I charity saw that. Shop. Yeah. And Brilliant. then you plop them all down. So it's like, you know, they just Brilliant. stack side by side by side. Yeah. And then Karen, Karen George also does the same thing, but in a slightly bigger, uh, was it Karen or Gaynor? I can't remember one of them. So, you know, how you can get, uh, bigger racks like for records or something or that you can or like dishes dish drawing. Yeah. yeah dish drawing racks and turn them on their sides and they can be good for or upright and they can be good for stacking boards small boards and then i was i said to her i need something that stacks bigger than 12 by 12 boards mm -hmm. and apparently people mm -hmm. have done things like got an old got an old child's crib and somehow turned it on its side and between the slats is where oh I guess you'd flip it upside down and take the top bars off and then between the slats is where you could stack your bigger paintings that you don't want leaning against each other. I thought that's yeah, brilliant. That, I I remember seeing that post with with her her scrapers and yeah. that yeah. is fantastic. It's making use of space in a better way, right? It's organized, but it's also yeah yeah 
and having those drawing racks like you know how it is if you've got a bunch of 12 by 12s you only have so much flat surface space to lay them out on to dry i got none <laughs> window sills i oh, i will, ikea and i will stand step up on our window sills in the condo that's a good yeah yeah I mean, is you're fantastic. right i could go to ikea and spend a lot of money at ikea because <laughs> you I go know. there and you're like oh how come i didn't know about that how come i didn't know about that that's good i could get organized in my kitchen <laughs> oh i love ikea go first thing in the morning though before anybody gets there yeah that's true and don't go on a weekend absolutely not um that's the, that is i got a couple of other tips there ones that we know about um one of them was killing your darlings you know if we like something too much not being afraid of painting it over it and taking risk and and um or take that. your palette and put it wet side down painting. that's yeah. always fun yeah um and then lucy roger smith said the most loveliest lovely comment her tip was to wear your heart on your sleeve and I thought that was such a different type of tip yeah. than I was originally thinking of. But, you know, it's really about getting yourself into your paintings, yeah. right? Uh, and she, she surely does that with her paints, yeah. her paintings. Great I tip. Have more. I have no more. I got, well, yeah. save them for another time. We can maybe do this every couple of months. I like Tuesday tips. And you know what? Somebody had a really good idea. They asked about playlists, studio playlists. We could happily talk about music oh, and, and podcasts. And shows and podcasts. Yes, we could. <laughs> yes, we could. Um, and I want, you know, I want to hear what other people are listening I, to. I know. <laughs> yes. Um, and you know, Smartless on the Road is out in about 10 days. That's Anybody who's a show, Smartless. Right? HBO. Yeah. Anybody who's a Smartless listener. They went on a road tour and they did six stops at, and did six live shows and they're releasing it on, uh, I think, HBO. HBO. I can't yeah, wait. Next to, I don't think they came to Toronto. Darn. They didn't come to Canada at all. Fuckers. It was, I think, mainly Midwest cities. So. Bruce Springsteen with your vodka, right, Rita? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks to everybody who sent us tips. We yes, really appreciate you. that. And uh, that you came on today to listen and to to watch and to add more to the conversation because I think we all learn so much from each other when we're we're willing to be open and share. It's just fun to yak. It absolutely is. We do have a guest next week. We'll be back with another guest show. And then two weeks from now, does everybody remember that we are going to be doing our next book club? Rick Rubin's book, The Creative Act. And if you don't know about him, there's, he's been getting interviewed all over the place. I just listened to a podcast, uh, Dax Shepard, Armchair Expert. I think Nick Wilton has interviewed him. Hmm. Um, the, anyways, he's fascinating because he was a music producer and he's writing about creativity and he produced the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He was uh, the Dixie Chicks, um, all sorts oh, of like great okay, music. I didn't know this. Yeah, and so, so his ideas about creating an environment where creatives can thrive, there were so many interesting lessons. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, your husband worked with him years ago. That's so cool, Pat. That you is cool. To on you got to tell us more about that. Okay, it, just say, pretend somebody hasn't read the book yet. About how long will it take them to read it? I'm not done yet. Um, is it long weeks. like Picasso's War? No, no, it's not. And it's not, it's not like an academic. That was kind of an academic yeah. book, historical yeah. academic book. Um, Yes, who wrote your brain on art. I just got that book too. That's another one. So uh, we could talk about that. Music, my husband's in the music industry. Mm. Excellent. Well, we want to know more, Patricia. Yep. Um, so that's two weeks from now. You still have time to read it. I think Barb and I both pinned the post if you need to get information. Rick Rubin, The Creative Act, I believe it's called. Five hours on audiobook. Thank you, Melody. Okay, I'm thank you. Kindle. So Kindle, I never really know how thick the book well, is or how long it's going to take me. I have it on my Kobo. Yeah. I've been reading something else, which I didn't really want to stop. I just want to make sure I don't run out of time. But if it's a five-hour audio book, that, that's like a five-hour read. Yeah. Roughly. And, and, and listening to him talk in some of these podcasts is really interesting. It it shed a different light on the book for me from the parts that what I have read of it. So but we'll okay. get into that on the 30th. Yep. yep, yep. And I will look for those podcasts. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for being here. And um, we love it when you guys show up and chat with us. We sure do. And we will save this, right? We will save this.
this is always saved. It'll end up in Barb's guides. It'll end up in my No Brush Required series and wherever you else. You, it gets you, can, you can always share. We love shares. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. For, yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to us, Yak. All right. Talk to you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.